And that's the perfect segue to take us to our next segment, which is your moment of Braben. Hello, I'd like to start off by thanking everyone who's already pledged to Kickstarter. It's an amazing number of people um, who've already pledged and to those who are watching, you know, come and join us. Uh, we're already having fun with this project. It's going to be a great ride. We're very excited about it. This game has to be made. Now, um, what I want to talk about now is the plan for development and also to sort of own up and discuss some of the things that we've not been discussing on the forums up to now. So. Um, the first thing is this game is has an absolutely amazing scope looking forward in time and we've been we've been looking at it and how we how we achieve it for a long time it's a sort of game that that terrifies the pants off publishers um, because the scope is so broad but having said that we're a long way down the line in achieving what we need to do and we've got we've got the foundations already and what we're looking at now is how we build on them so the idea with this is we've looked at the game we've looked at what the game is that we need to be able to achieve what we want. We've also looked at where it can go after the first release. And that's what we've been talking about a lot. Now, one of the questions people have been asking a lot about, for example, is landing on planets. Now, yes, we're going to have landing on planets, but there is a lot of detail that that's re on that that's really important. So, for example, if you were to then have a follow-up question, what will be there when you land on the planet? That's what's been concerning us a lot. If you imagine every planet when you get down to the surface is just a differently coloured height map, that would be very, very disappointing, even with lovely atmospheric effects. Uh, what I want to see down on the planet is, is interesting things, cities, scapes, even animals, life, trees, um, being a big game hunter, all of the things that we've been very, very excited about for a long time, we want to be able to realise. And the amount of work to create those things is so huge we want to do it properly. What's really important is we do each of these things really well. So that will that sort of thing will not be included on day one. Um, we don't want it to be a, a dull experience where you just go down, you get essentially exactly the same experience wherever you land. So when we first release the game, um, you will not be able to go down to the planet's surface. Your ship won't be suitably equipped. Um, we will show some sort of re-entry effect, but we won't be able to go all the way down to the planet's surface. But we have designed the game with that capability in mind going forward. And at a later date, we will gradually add, add more and more functionality to allow you to do that. The game richness will gradually increase. Another example that we've built into the structure of the game is um, ship interiors. Now, a lot of people have seen, you've seen that we're designing all the ships with the interiors in mind, how the cargo is unloaded, all of that sort of thing, uh, how damage occurs. And that's because that another thing that we are doing um, again down the line is that you will be able to walk around inside your ship you'll be able to get out of your ship walk around inside space stations other vehicles all of that sort of thing um, we've shown um, the damage on the ship the damage models imagine looking at that from inside the ship outwards seeing your cargo flying out into space seeing the flames trying to fight them um, all of those things that we plan with time, they won't be at the first release because we want to do them right. We want to do them well. Um, all of these will be done as updates. And I'll, I'll talk some more about that in a second. But the point really is it we want to do it well, but the game has to be structured in a way to allow it from the start. So we're designing the ships so that they work that way. And so that when we come to do it, it's not a problem. When we come to show all of these elements walking around the ships, walking into other people's ships potentially, potentially stealing them. We have got in mind all of the things, all of the gameplay, the really rich gameplay that that entails. And it's, you know, to go back to what I've been saying right from the start of this Kickstarter, what is the game I want to play? This is the game I want to play. Because actually, in many ways, it doesn't feel like a game. It feels like a world that I'm being brought into. And with each of these um, subsequent updates, we expect that world will get richer and richer and more and more of the things that we are excited about will be there. You know, you will be able to walk around the spaceport. You will be able to see gold being loaded into someone else's ship. You will be able to sneak in and hide in amongst the cargo. All of those things are phenomenal gameplay opportunities um, where that ship might actually be the ship of another player. So just think where that all ends. You know, all of these things I think we need to do right. It would be very easy to do them very poorly and that would be my fear. 
So these things will not be there at day one. What will be there at day one is a great game that we've already described where all of those things, those fantastic things we were doing in, in Elite and Frontier that we love will be there. It's just the things that we want to extend on, we want to extend on really well. We want them to be compelling. Now, I think they will be compelling, and that's what all the design discussion forums that we've already talked about, that they're at, they're at the um, different pledge, pledge levels are there for to do, to work out which we do first of these things. If you like, each of these are stretch goals, and one of the things that we're looking at doing is actually saying that. They won't happen on day one, even if we hit the stretch goals, but they will happen with time, um, sometime after release. And these are other things that will be in the mix, including support for other platforms. We've already said that we very much like to go on um, other platforms like Macintosh, and there are others too, um, that are very exciting going forward. But I think the important thing for me is that we do each section of the game right. Um, we do it in a way that doesn't cause problems for the players. We do it in a way that builds on what we've, ha what we've had before. And to me, that's what really matters in the game. Um, that it is the game that we all want. Um, and I think this is the way that we achieve that. Uh, this is what makes me really excited. It means that we, what can happen with all of these things is they can create unnecessary delays as well. We think, oh, we can't go now because the, such and such a planet isn't right yet. What we can do, and I think is perfectly acceptable to do, is close off areas until we're happy that that's great. So there's another part of this plan is we are planning to reserve as a percentage tiny areas of the galaxy for future expansion. We don't even know yet what we're going to put there, but it allows us to put whole new exciting things to be discovered um, at a later date. If you get there as an exploring player, what will happen is it will just, it will say, oh, oh you can't go here. And I'm sure there'll be a lot of people that map these regions <laughs> with time and produce maps of where there's a, a, a sort of, a, 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 a cutout that's been reserved for something exciting in the future. But ironically, that's all part of the excitement. You know, we, we have that, you know, we're, we're, we're planning for that now. And what we will do with time, as this game builds, as it's, it becomes something that, that people want to spend a lot of time in, they'll say, well, ooh, that must be, a, must be another race, you know, what's going to be there? And of course, there will be a lot of gameplay that flows from that. These are the things, these are the reasons that I want us to make this game. These are the reasons that make me very, very excited. A lot of people here have already part of this. A lot of the people here have pledged very, very generous amounts of money, and that is really, really appreciated. It's making this project possible. A lot of people are watching in the wings, are very, very excited about that too. Come and be a part of it. There will be lots of things. Being one of the original Kickstarters will, will be fantastic for you. We will all be together on the Alpha and the Beta. We'll all be part of this journey. Come and join us. It's going to be in a really exciting ride. Thank you very much. All right, so that was David Braben talking about the development process. And obviously, uh, you know, it's just great seeing David talk. That was from the Kickstarter days. Uh, so that was some time ago. But I personally am a fan. I, I absolutely love David Braben. Uh, when you see him talk, his interest and his love of the game is absolutely real and palpable. And his excitement is, I just think, amazing. So big fan of David Braben myself and love all of this. From a purely selfish standpoint, I kind of almost wish that Frontier was just making one game and it was Elite Dangerous. I don't want to share David with all of the other products. David has now had to move upstairs to the big boss room. And while he still oversees everything, he is not the lead developer for Elite Dangerous anymore. Now it's been ha passed off. It was first passed off to Michael Brooks, who I think did a superb job to it before on it, rather, before he moved on to uh, work in now he plays with dinosaurs, uh, with Jurassic, whatever that is, Jurassic, uh, whatever, park, and and world, whatever. And uh, then it was Lawrence for a while, and now the lead developer for, or the game manager, producer, whatever, for Elite Dangerous is Pierce. Um, uh, so, yeah, Pierce Jackson. And that's where we're at with this. 
Now, obviously, you heard him talk there and, and, and the things that he said, some of which have come to pass, some of which have not yet. So I would like to get your guys' opinion on that that video. How do you see the development of Elite coming along and what, what ways do you feel like it's chugging right along on schedule and what ways do you feel like it's fallen behind and what ways do you think like, I don't know if it's ever going to go do this or do that. Let's start with you, Tweak. Yeah, well, he's, he, he brought up a few things that people have been begging for, especially of late at the ship interiors. I mean, it seems like we're going, we're, we're still moving forward in the general direction of David Braben's baby here. I mean, Elite is his baby. And, and we're now at the point where we're getting out of our ships and walking around. And I think somewhere down the line, we'll see he's going to push it forward. That's, that's why I'm confident in Elite Dangerous, because I believe David Braben, as long as he is here, then then he's going to keep pushing this forward so i think we'll see some of that stuff now watching your cargo fly out on fire from inside the ship stuff like that i don't know if we'll ever get to that kind of a point but one can dream yeah it's 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 nice to go back and see these older older videos you can see that um i i think really you can see brayden he really like he actually cares for this project. Um, passion. And, Pure uh, yeah, passion. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And he has so many... I mean, this is like, just when we are sitting here, we could sit and discuss like, oh, where we want us to see Elite in like five or 10 years. If we, if we could like put down the line for Elite. The, yes, a lot of the things you're saying, we'd love to see those. And I'm absolutely sure that um, that this is still things that, that they want to put in, but it's also a matter of things take time. And as Elite grows, it becomes more and more complicated. Um, there are more and more things to take into consideration. Um, some of the things like um, uh, what he, he talked about, like fully atmosphered planets with uh, with trees and cities, and uh, mm. uh, you could be a big game hunter. I don't see that coming to Elite anytime soon. I think mm. ship interiors is much more likely. Um, and I've, I've always been a little skeptical about ship interiors because I couldn't really see how much gameplay it would add. Um, but after talking back and forth with some people, I actually think that they, they could add some um, some secondhand gameplay around ship interiors. Like oh, yes. If, if, you, if you have the fully interior ships, you could have a crash type 9 on a planet and your job is to go in and get the little data thingy from 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 somewhere in the in on the bridge and you have to navigate your way through the ship and it could i don't know been infested by pirates or whatever Dude, um, not just not just crash on a planet what about right now you get distress calls from a type 9 that says we're out of fuel give us fuel what if you got a distress call from a type 9 you get there it's the automated distress beacon you eva over to that ship and come in and maybe it's empty and just needs repairs maybe it's to be looted maybe it has data on it or maybe there's someone in there that's not friendly that wants to go ahead and punch your ticket or people you can you could could either decide to yeah, you could go you could find the, maybe like the crew managed to uh uh, to survive the crash and you could uh, then make the call and you're gonna um, shoot them uh, shoot them on sight and say mm, everybody died on sight and you're gonna go now I have loot or you're gonna save the people and bring them back uh, home to a station somewhere where they are safe and 100%. then you could so, so there is all that just and that's just a crash ship all that uh, like what, uh, what i would call secondhand gameplay that's not directly the ship interiors themselves but just the fact that it's there it enables a lot of things that's 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 really cool mm. and i hope that that's something we're going to see someday and i think it's great to see i can go back and watch these old videos and think oh yeah right so so like yeah the scope when they started was absolutely massive was absolutely huge um and it's been reduced quite a bit but it also just reminds reminds me that there is still a lot of potential for what you can do in terms of future additions to elite um and i i hope and believe that odyssey is not the uh, is not the end there's gonna be something else let me point out something i mean obviously we've said in the last couple of weeks several things like you know you can put a science office a science bay in your ship where you do stuff where like if i just go out and point my plant gun at a plant and then beep i scan it okay boom i get whatever but just the same way as you can honk in a system and get one payout for honking it but then if you do the mini game for you know fss scanning you get more of a payout and then you do the second mini game for dsss scanning you get a higher payout what if you point your plant gun at a plant you collect the data you get payout a but if you take it back to your ship 
where you have a science bay and you do some one round of testing on it, you get payout B. And if you do a second round of testing on it or do it at a better rate, more proficient, do whatever with the minigame, find uh, other examples of that plant in, in neighboring or similar plants in neighboring star systems, different genetic mutations, or find it on an ice world, find it on a rocky world, find it on a whatever, you could get payout C. Like A, I think a science lab is an obvious no-brainer for inside the ship. On top of that, a med bay, a no-brainer for in type uh, inside a ship. Uh, a, a captain quarters where you can put your own personal stuff like we were talking about with the fleet carrier and they could just make all of the monies you know here's thirty dollars for a fucking robot or or, or or for a little dog in a spacesuit that sits in your apartment shut up and take my money every, every you know uh, uh on top of that uh okay here is uh a, uh a a brig where you can catch a guy doing bounty hunting type stuff you throw him in the brig and take him back or uh a a you know cargo bay or engineering stuff where you can do some advanced engineering on your ship or repairs or uh let's let's not you play along with me astro i know you play star citizen so let's not overlook the fact that just walking in your ship by itself is a fucking gameplay loop don't tell me it's not anybody who plays star citizen that's walked around in their ship or driven a rock an roc which is their version of an srv inside of the ship and you got to try to park it in there just right that is a gameplay loop in and of itself even if you do nothing else yeah just, yeah learning learning the, the whole like park park your little uh, ground vehicles correctly <laughs> in the in the bay so that it doesn't block uh, exits and that kind of thing that and and i've been doing a lot of uh, of mining in uh, in star citizen and the, without going into too much detail the the, the basic is you you would often mine in one ship transport it to a place do refinery and then transport the refined materials to the final cell location in a separate ship that has more cargo and there is actually a quite a bit of i get quite a bit of joy when i take all that cargo that i spent a couple days mining and i put it in a ship and i walk in and i walk through the cargo bay of that ship and i can see all the boxes sitting there in the ship filling up my cargo holders like yeah i mined all that and now i'm gonna go and i'm gonna hope the servers stay online for long enough to make to get to the cell location <laughs> I mean, look at look at the idea of saying, OK, I, now I can see my refinery bay and I go down there and if I just mine it and I don't even have Odyssey, then I get X amount for refinery. But if I go down and play the refinery mini game, I can up that by 30 percent yield or 20 percent yield or something like there are so many loops that can be put into ship interiors. It's just begging for it, in my opinion. Shh. Ship interiors also, all of that that you just said would also add a game loop of you see a derelict anaconda floating in space and you fly your SLF over, land on it and scavenge that. It would open up so much, so many possibilities. Oh, oh here's, here's an interesting thought. What if you had, now that we're talking mining, so if you have an extra mining loop that's in the refinery, multi-crew with one of your friends mm -hmm. one of you is sitting in the main ship firing your mining lasers collecting the rocks just as we do today and then someone else is running around like a little hamster in in your in your cargo or your refinery whatever and and takes all that ore that you mine with the lasers and they run it through a a separate refining process to um to get higher value materials out of it or compression process so it takes less cargo so it's more valuable or something like that so you can carry more whatever something like that so you add a multiplayer aspect to it. I mean, you could, if you wanted to, just park your ship anywhere in a station and then go down and do the refining yourself when you're done. Mm. But if you could be something people could do while you are mining, I think that could be a, a really cool way. And, and you could have similar game loops um, with, with uh, similar like ideas of having like support tasks done by uh, by other players. Um, it for the game loops, I think that could be uh, could be really cool. Captain Ply in the chat just put two words, so a feeling that I've had for for a while now. We need more civilian jobs and modules for our ships. I'm sick of combat. I think there's a good amount of players in Elite Dangerous that are super stoked with combat and love the new FPS stuff and love the new you know whatever. But I think just as much, if not vastly more. There are players that sort of would agree with myself and with Captain Ply here and say, yeah, I want more science. I want more NASA and Star Trek and less fucking, uh, uh, what's the, the one with the big bugs where they fly? Starship Trooper. I want more Star Trek and NASA and less Starship Trooper. Or at least if you have the Starship Trooper there for people that want the Starship Trooper, but have 
the NASA there for the rest of us who want the, you know, they can make that choice. Don't force us to just do combat as the only sort of meaningful, meaningful thing. Tweet, your, your thoughts on this whole development thing and all this stuff. You, you hopped in on the ship interiors, but on the larger point, I want your opinion. Well, uh, it's it's kind of hard. I mean, he, I don't know. The developing, they've been doing a great job. I mean, let's break Elite down at its core, Elite Dangerous down at its core. And even with all the things, all the potential that it has, it is still a very unique game out there. Developing this game has been a long project. It's been hard. It's been a lot of work for them. And, and they've left a lot of stuff on the table. But all in all, it's a spectacular game. And I think they're going to be able to develop it further. I really do. I just, I don't think it's going away. Uh, to Astro's comment earlier, we need a roadmap so that players that know that this is a seven-year-old game or whatever it is now know it's not ending anytime soon. Uh, I, I totally believe that. It's not. It's This is just the beginning, kind of. We're still, as you saw Lord Braven speaking there, he was spewing out all of these passionate ideas that he has. He's still banging the drum in the back room trying to get this stuff done. I mean, when those videos came out, those were very ambitious ideas to think about for a video game. There's a reason none of that stuff is in any other video game that's available to us right now. And the fact that Elite is getting so close on certain aspects of it is a good sign for things to come. I would love to see a, a module where you go in your ship and you do archaeology. You go out and you study these ruins and then you come back and you check your etchings and you, you carbon date shit and you do stuff. I would love to see a module where you come back to your ship and you do mineralogy. You're studying the rocks, you're studying the, the mineral samples or whatever and that gives you, you know, some data that can then take it back to a station and sell the mineral rights for X Planet. Remember, there was a whole thing uh, in Babylon 5. Uh, Sinclair had a girlfriend who, was it Sinclair or was it when they switched over? I, I, one of the captains had a girlfriend, uh, some Asian chick that she was like, her thing was she flew around to different planets and like checked mineral rights and stuff and then sold them to large companies. And she was doing, she was there at Babylon 5 doing a negotiation, whatever. Imagine you go down and you do your DSS scan. First you honk the system, then FSS the system, and then you DSS the system. You know, when you FSS, you say, oh, these planets have these minerals, okay. And then you DSS it and you map it, and then you go down and maybe you take, I don't know, uh, rock samples or core samples from, you know, eight different sites on the planet. And then you take that back to your mineralogy, your science lab, where you do some game of something. Catherine Sakai, thank you, Wintermute. You do some mini game of something and you take that information and go and, 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 uh, you know, sell that to a, a place for a lot of money for the mineral rights. Or yeah, Captain Picard had his girlfriend Vash that was like a uh, archeologist slash fucking looter who would sell stuff for the money or whatever. Like uh, the idea of going to, once we get planets that have, you know, sort of more Earth-like world and they have like lots of more plants or whatever, the ability of going to a, a, a plants that had grasslands or forest or whatever and, and taking samples of stuff for, you know, for the, the, the raw material or for, for crop growing food purposes or for whatever, like the ability to interact and do some pseudoscience of some kind on these planets, something other than there's a guy, I shoot him in the face. Something a little more thoughtful, a little higher level. I think these could all be cool. Does anybody have anything else on the David Braben development thing before we move on and, and hit all of the videos and stuff for the night? All right, hearing hearing none. I know at some point during these videos, I'm going to say goodnight now to Astro because at some point while we're playing these videos, he's going to check out. It's like four in the morning there and he's got uh, his, his wife is already asleep and he's supposed to be waking up soon to do a long drive on a trip. So thank you so much for joining us, Astro. Always phenomenal. I would pimp your shit, but who am I kidding? A thousand times more people listen to you than us. But it's still in the show notes. We'll have your stuff. We have quite a few people here today, actually. Yeah, yeah. Showing. Awesome. Great. Thanks for having me. I'll be uh, I'll be getting some uh, getting some sleep now. Thanks, and brother. Be well.